What's up guys, welcome back to Ubad's lab and today we're going to be extracting manganese dioxide from batteries. Manganese dioxide is a blackish or brown solid that can be found in a mineral called pyrolusite. It's also commonly used in dry cell batteries. And the main reason that I want to extract it is because I'm going to be using it in my next experiment to act as a catalyst for hydrogen peroxide, and that's going to look really cool. So over here, I have the Lewis dot structure for manganese dioxide. And then over here, I drew out uh, a diagram for a dry cell battery. So as you can see, there's the carbon rod in the middle. And then that's surrounded by a manganese dioxide layer and then some ammonium chloride paste and then there's a zinc casing on the outside. So the way we're going to be extracting it is by first using a screwdriver to take out the casing on the outside and then using pliers we're going to pull out the carbon rod and then after that we can easily just scoop out the manganese dioxide over here. So once we've done that, I'm going to purify it further by washing it in some distilled water and then filtering it out and then we should have some pretty pure manganese dioxide. So even though this is a pretty safe procedure, I still recommend using gloves and protective eyewear, especially for when you start purifying the manganese dioxide. So the equipment includes some zinc carbon batteries. So I'm going to be specifically using the Panasonic zinc carbon batteries that can be found almost anywhere. And then to extract the manganese dioxide, you're going to need a screwdriver and pliers. And then to filter out the manganese dioxide, we're going to need some distilled water. Alright, so I have my screwdriver and pliers over here and the zinc carbon battery. So the first step is going to be finding uh, kind of a split in the casing and once you find that you're gonna be able to peel from the top and actually separate it out so I've worked on it a little bit and all you're gonna have to do is just keep on peeling at it and eventually it'll separate out Uh, it's starting to come off now. I think I could just do this with my hands now. So we got the casing out and we can just get rid of this because we won't need this anymore. Okay. And the top came off too. This is more stuff that we're not going to need. And now you can see that there's a plastic casing that we're going to have to take off as well. So you can just kind of cut it with the screwdriver. Yeah. And now once you cut it, you can just peel it off. Okay, the plastic is off, some more of the caps came off. Alright, and now this is the zinc outer coating that we've come to now. And what we're going to have to do is take this uh, cap off on the top. Let's see if I can do that with my hands, I might need the screwdriver. Okay, I got it out. And now there's a cardboard layer that we're going to have to use the screwdriver to take out. Ooh. Okay, so I took the cardboard layer out now. 
and the next step is going to be to take out the uh, carbon rod in the middle so now I got the beaker out because when we're taking out the carbon rod some of the manganese dioxide will start coming out as you can see you can already see it but it'll be way easier to take it out once we take out the carbon rod so I'm gonna get the pliers and just grab onto the carbon rod Oh, seems like it broke it might be too fragile actually to take it out with pliers okay um, the carbon rod actually keeps on breaking when I use the pliers let me give you guys a closer look on that so the carbon rod actually broke off and I don't think we're gonna be able to take it out with pliers so I think we can just start taking out the manganese dioxide that's around it and just try to ignore the carbon rod I guess so I'm just gonna start scooping out the manganese dioxide Alright, so this is all of the manganese dioxide that I was able to get out from this battery. I actually have one more battery over here, so I'm just going to repeat the experiment off camera before I filter it out. So I just repeated it for another battery. So we have some more manganese dioxide now, and we can start filtering it by adding some distilled water to it. okay so I added the distilled water and now I'm just gonna mix it using a glass straw rod and basically what this is gonna do is get rid of anything that's water soluble in the manganese dioxide and that will include like the electrolytes that will be in the solution All right, now that I'm done mixing it, we're gonna have to let this sit and then let the manganese dioxide separate out again and then we can run it through some filter paper. So I let this solution sit overnight and now we can see that there's clearly two layers that have formed. One darkish black layer at the bottom that shows the uh, manganese dioxide separated out and then a clear layer at the top which will be separating out using a pipette so I'm just going to start pipetting the clear layer from the top into another beaker now As you can see, the water that's coming out over here is almost completely clear, showing that we're leaving most of the manganese dioxide in this beaker. Alright, uh, now I'm going to go and get the rest of the water into this beaker. And now that I'm done pipetting all of the top layer into this beaker, we have some pretty clear water. And now we're ready to dry out the manganese dioxide over here. So I'm going to leave it in an oven for a little bit and hopefully it should return to its solid form and dry out. So I let it sit in the oven for around 10 minutes at around 250 degrees and now it's running through some filter paper and you can see that the stuff ending out at the bottom that goes passes through the filter paper is some clear water so there's still a bunch of moisture that we need to get out all right so after filtering it i let it sit 
and air dry for one day and now we have this black and clumpy powder so I'm going to transfer this to a bottle now for storage. All right, so I labeled the bottle and now we have our final product of manganese dioxide. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed the video. Also feel free to ask me uh, questions in the comment section. So also we're at almost at 100 subscribers. So my next video is probably be a live Q&A video. And then after that, I'll be working through another general chemistry problem by showing you guys how to set up a Born-Haber cycle. And then later on, I'm going to finally use the manganese dioxide that we extracted today to react with hydrogen peroxide. So stay tuned for all of that, guys.